Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, I'm going to talk about authorization in Postman and why do you need authorization for the APIs, right? So to take a very simple example, say for example, you are an employee of the company, you are working in a particular building, right? So you get a building pass, you get an authorization pass that yes, you are the person employed in this particular company and you have the valid employee card that you tap on and the system recognizes and you are authorized to access the building premises and go ahead and work there okay so now the question here is if there is no authorization right so that means anyone can just simply walk into the building right so that is where in order to restrict access to only people who are authorized to work in a particular company authorization is required now similar concept is applicable to any of the applications that is that are being built right so for example you are accessing your gmail okay you are accessing your emails in gmail so you put your username you put your password then you click sign in so that means you have been authorized to access your email not anyone else's right so that's how you are able to access your emails if say for example there was no authorization that means if a person has your email id and doesn't require any password then they can simply go ahead and search what all email you you have been sending through or receiving right so that's where authorization is required now in terms of postman and api most of the apis even though they are public apis will require some sort of authorization to authorize the person whosoever is uh, whether the person is authorized or coming from a valid you know authorization having a valid token or password only then it will allow them to access okay now till now we haven't been so there are some apis that won't require any authorization but then majority of the implementation if you are working in banking or any other organization you will see the apis that you are testing will require authorization okay so now for example fake store api there's a fake store api uh, rest api that we have been accessing if i simply go ahead so there is a parameter okay limit and then in the authorization you will see this request is using no auth from collection right so this is not using any authorization we are able to directly send this request right and then we are able to get the response you will see that we are getting the response as well okay the particular 200 okay that means we are getting the success response from the message so some apis won't require or some endpoints won't require any authorization at, at all but in case the apis the rest api or soap apis require authorization then we have to go in postman and in the type we have to select the type of authorization that is supported and there are many types right so there is basically you know api key bearer token if there is a jot bearer right so these are a different authorization techniques or techno uh, authorization techniques that are basically utilized so basic auth which is basically nothing but username and password right so username and password you put and then you have you know uh, the digest or oauth okay so these are all different techniques that are available in order to authorize so depending on what authorization type is being supported by that particular api that will be available in the api documentation right so now from here on we will learn api testing with the real jira api production api basically so i have created a jira instance okay and i'll show you in the next video how you can create an instance and create token etc but to show you about the jira api right so jira api basically so jira just go to google and say jira api documentation and let's open jira api documentation so jira cloud platform rest api this is what we are going to work with and we'll work with some of the endpoints in jira cloud rest api so now here we have we are at the documentation okay so please go ahead and read the documentation at least the initial part you know the about and everything so make sure that you read the details here so this is the rest api the version that is available okay and now here below you'll see straight away in the version information you'll see the authentication or authorization information available as well and given a little detail okay so let's move a little bit further and you will see that how we are going to access the api calls so you have to simply have the site url okay 
and then followed by the resource the endpoint right so basically rest api3 and then the resource name whatever resource right so here if you see when i signed up okay what is my url the endpoint the site url is this one that is highlighted rcv academy live.atlassian.net right i'll show you how you can sign up and come to this particular point in next video but as of now just understand how we are going to use it so this is the url right site url will use replace site url with our site url and then followed by rest api3 and whatever resource we are trying to access okay so this uh, documentation okay this documentation the basic stuff will help you to understand how you are going to access any of the api okay now i won't go into any of these details as and when we move along in this particular tutorial whatever is required i'll anyways explain it okay so i'll simply scroll down let's quickly see the instance information okay so if you'll see there is an instance information section here if, if i have just scrolled down here and instance information is the section where you will get the instance information the information about the instance that you are accessing so we have signed up at this with this particular this is this is our url okay if i want to get the instance information with the with the api this is the endpoint right so rest api slash three instance and then license information okay so before this before forward slash rest what we have to append we have to append the url the site url okay and then basically go ahead and trigger this particular request in postman right so if you see get license you will see all the information that is required okay let me zoom in so what this does it returns licensing information about jira instance right so pretty self-explanatory if you'll go to the endpoint it will show you what all methods so this get method is supported by this particular get license right and permissions required none okay connected app score required read okay oauth scope required there's nothing and then classic you know recommendation so these are the scopes that are basically that you can specify okay then in the responses you will have the different responses that are available 401 author unauthorized if you are not authorized to access this particular endpoint and if you're authorized you will get 200 okay rest. okay so now if we go to the curl right so you'll simply go ahead and see the curl request okay out of all these that are available these are different requests uh, based on different uh, programming language support so for example in java you can simply go ahead and copy paste in the python you can copy paste like this and use this particular request we'll simply stick to the curl okay now here you will see the url that we are going to uses your domain dot class in dot net and then followed by rest api instance license right so we'll simply go ahead and copy this url okay this is the endpoint that we are going to hit okay and then we have the user and the api token that means we have to authorize or we have to be authorized in order to access this endpoint okay so let's quickly go ahead here in postman what i'll do is i will create a new collection okay and i'll name this collection as jira api postman okay i'll name this as like like this and within this let me create a request now i want to get the jira instance information now here i have pasted sorry not there in the url okay now this is the new request let me change it to the get instance in okay and this is the endpoint now this url okay site url i need to change to what url the url that is for my site right so my site is this one okay so i'll simply copy and paste it and let me quickly there are two double slash there okay make sure there is no mistake there okay a little bit okay so now you will see that i have this in automatically jira uh postman has has added uh, the headers right you can see that and then just the endpoint okay now let me go ahead and send this and see what will happen. okay so you will see that here 401 unauthorized okay which is what we have seen here in the documentation that you will see unauthorized if you are not authorized or you are using incorrect credentials or the credentials are missing okay that means in order to access any of these jira apis or endpoint we need what we need authorization so we'll go to the authorization tab okay and in the auth tab we'll simply go ahead here in the drop down and we'll say basic auth okay why basic auth because if you see the documentation here it uses 
the email and the token right so we'll simply go ahead and use the basic auth and in the basic auth we'll use the username and the api token right so api token will simply how we are going to get the api token from the instance so from the instance i'll show you in the next just next video you can go to the instance manage account and from there we'll create the api token that will be created for this particular account so for your testing make sure you create your jira instance then create your token and use that token as of now i have already created the token so let me simply copy it and use that in postman okay so what i'll do i'll simply put the password here i can simply put the token as well here okay i'll put the whole token here okay but you will see this message that it's always advisable to keep the token sensitive data into variables right so we can simply say control a to select all of the token and i'll simply say set as variable and make sure this token treat it like your password okay it is sensitive information don't share this token with anyone else because it's kind of if somebody has this token they can do anything to your jira instance because they'll be having email id they have the token they have the full right to access your jira account they can access using these api calls okay so now i'll simply go ahead and create a new variable and i'll say jira token okay name as jira token value as is and in the scope i'll just keep the scope as collection so that this token is available to the whole collection jira api postman right i don't want to keep it global because i won't need it out of this jira project right so i'll simply set this particular variable and you will see that the jira token has been added here and token is available there right so i've used the username the username for my jira account that i used to sign in for jira sign up for jira and the token now if i go ahead and send this particular request let's see what happens you'll see status 200 okay right so let me move here so this time you will see the status is 200 okay and it has returned all the information about the application what all products are there in my account jira, jira service desk is paid jira software is free right so these products are there these applications are there and the plan information for the instance that i am using okay so this is brief about the authorization of the apis and most of the even though there are public and free apis they will require or they might require the authorization and depends what authorization they might be you know just a bearer token okay so you just have a token that gets generated and you simply paste that token here or it could be simple auth or it could be api key right so key and value okay so there are different authorization techniques and depending on what authorization technique is supported by the api that you are testing you will choose the type accordingly and use the authorization data accordingly in postman in order to access the endpoint right so that's all about the authorization of the jira api and authorization in general when you are doing any of the api testing in the next video i'll explain you step by step how to sign up for the jira account create your api token so that we can go ahead and start working with jira real life apis or real time apis in order to learn api testing using postman so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching